Have you ever stared at a chart, completely enthralled, convinced you're about to predict the next big move? You might even have a vision board full of fast cars, a beach house, and plans for early retirement. But hold on a second. Before you quit your day job and trade your way to billionaire status, let's do a reality check. Are you really a trader or are you just a glorified daydreamer? Today, we're diving into a crucial checklist to help you separate fantasy from financial finesse. So, grab a pen and paper, a drink if you like, and let's see if you have what it takes to navigate the wild world of trading. Are you day trading, swing trading, or anything goes? Let's imagine the market is a giant bakery with fresh bread coming out of the oven every few minutes. Day traders are like people rushing in and out, trying to snag the very first rolls as they come out, hoping to resell them for a tiny profit to the next person in line. They need to be quick and have a good eye for the hottest batches, but even a slight mistake can mean getting burned by an overcooked roll. This can be likened to buying high. Swing traders, on the other hand, are more like folks who come in every few hours. They aren't concerned about the first roll out of the oven. They're looking for good deals on bread that might sit for a while, but is still fresh and tasty. They might buy a loaf in the morning and come back in the afternoon to see if the price has gone down a bit. The potential profit might be bigger than at day traders, but they also have to wait to see if the price goes their way. If you're new to the bakery, that is the market, it's probably best to start as a swing trader. It gives you more time to learn the ropes, understand how the bread prices fluctuate, that is the price of what you trade. And avoid getting burned by grabbing a hot roll without thinking. This simply means making a rash trade. Once you're a seasoned baker yourself that can be likened to an experienced trader, you can try your hand at snagging those first rolls, aka day trading, if you're comfortable with the heat. Now on your notepad, answer question one. Are you a day trader, a swing trader, or you are something entirely different? Did you backtest and forward test your strategy? You're at a flea market, rummaging through a box of old fishing lures. You see a rusty one with chipped paint, but the design looks intriguing. You think, this could be a real treasure. Maybe I can catch a prize fish with it. But before you hand over your cash, wouldn't you want to test it out first? Backtesting is like taking that lure to a nearby pond and seeing if it catches anything. You cast it a few times, see how the fish react, and if it snags on weeds or breaks easily. It's a way to assess its potential in a safe environment. Forward testing is like taking that lure to a real fishing trip. You use it alongside your other, proven lures, and see how it performs under real fishing conditions. Does it attract the kind of fish you're after? Does it hold up against a strong tug? Just like the rusty lure, a trading strategy that sounds good in theory might not work in the market. Backtesting lets you see how it would have performed with historical data, uncovering any weaknesses. Forward testing then refines it further, showing how it handles the ever-changing currents of the real market. If you skip these tests and just jump in, you're practically gambling. You might get lucky and catch a big fish which is synonymous to making a profitable trade, but chances are, your lure will break, that is your strategy will fail, and you'll lose your money while you watch the fish swim away. So, a responsible trader wouldn't just buy a lure based on a hunch, they'd test it out before casting their line into the market. Question 2. Do you test your strategy using historical and live market data? What about risk management? Imagine you're a mountain climber, scaling the tricky peak. You have a backpack full of supplies. That's your trading capital. Now you wouldn't just blindly scramble up the mountain, hoping you have enough supplies to reach the top. That is make profitable trades and get back down safely, protecting your capital. Risk management is your climbing plan. You would need to map your route, research the mountain, AKA understanding the market, identify potential hazards like price swings, and plan your ascent and descent, which is your entry and exit points for trades. You most probably will only bring what's essential, that is risking the set percentage of your capital per trade, 
and pack extra supplies for unexpected situations, having a buffer for potential losses. You might choose a steeper but shorter path, higher risk, higher reward trade. If you're confident in your skills, or let's call it, your trading strategy, but you wouldn't attempt it in a blizzard, that is avoid trading during volatile markets. Then you take breaks when you're tired, after a losing streak, to assess the climb, review your strategy, and ensure you have enough energy to reach the summit, which is to preserve capital for future trades. Without a proper plan, you could run out of supplies, lose all your capital, or get caught in a storm, unexpected market swings. A good climber, like a good trader, understands the importance of managing risk throughout the journey. Question 3. Do you manage your risk? If yes, how do you do it? Do you have a trading journal? Let's use the analogy of a baker who is on a mission to create the most delicious cookies in town. He tries out different recipes, some from family favorites, some from cookbooks, and some he invents. He bakes a batch, let them cool, and take a bite. Delicious. But a few days later, he can't quite remember what made them so good. Was it the extra pinch of cinnamon or the secret ingredient from his grandma's recipe box? A trading journal is like your recipe book for successful trades. Every time you place a trade, you write down the ingredients, the market conditions, your entry and exit points, the reasoning behind your decisions. It's like noting down if you use brown sugar or white, walnuts or pecans. Looking back at your journal is like reviewing your most successful cookie batches. You can see what worked well. Maybe you bought a stock when it dipped slightly, just like you added a touch of salt to enhance the sweetness. You can also identify your flops. Perhaps you held onto a losing trade for too long, burning in the oven like overcooked cookies. The data in your journal helps you refine your future trades. You learn from your successes and failures, just like a baker adjusts their recipe based on past results. Maybe you'll tweak your entry point based on a previous winning trade or avoid a certain market condition that led to a loss. Without a journal, you're essentially baking in the dark, hoping for delicious results by chance. But with your trusty recipe book by your side, you can consistently create winning trades, one well-documented step at a time. Now to question four, do you have a trading journal? Are your trading goals long-term and how do you manage emotions? Imagine you're planning a road trip across the country. Your ultimate goal, long-term trading goal, is to reach a breathtaking national park on the other side. Now, if you get caught up in the excitement of the moment, which is just like emotional trading, you might be tempted to take random detours for every roadside attraction or quirky souvenir shop, meaning you are chasing short-term gains. Sure, some detours might be fun like profitable trades in the short term, but they could also add unnecessary miles or risk and delay your arrival at the national park, which is the long-term goal. They might even lead you down a dead end, losing trades. A good traveler, like a good trader, has a clear plan. They focus on the big picture, keeping the national park, which is long-term goal in mind, understanding it's a journey, not a sprint. They plan their route, researching the best highways, consider potential traffic jams, just like market volatility, and factor in rest stops, taking breaks after losses. They resist the urge to veer off course for every shiny object, which can be likened to avoiding emotional trading decisions. And they enjoy the ride. They appreciate the smaller sights along the way, enjoy some short-term gains without losing sight of the final destination long-term goal. This brings me to our final question. What are your goals as a trader? Do you want to become a millionaire in a couple of months or you are thinking long-term? Accepting it is a marathon, not a sprint. If your answers to these questions are confident positive responses, you are definitely on the right track. Maybe you've already mastered some aspects but haven't gotten around to others. Hey, no worries. Now's the perfect time to jump on those. But if you find yourself prioritizing short-term wins over long-term goals, you skip testing your strategy with old and live data. Don't journal, 
and ignoring risk management. That sounds more like gambling than trading. And if you are thinking you need a hand getting started, I totally get it. Check out this video about my journey from gambler to a trader, how I started out thinking trading was easy. It's packed with tips to help you level up your game. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you find the video helpful. Thanks for watching.